Jimmy Valentine back at it again. This is a small discussion review of Ace Universe's Comic-Con in Long Island and a little bit of discussion of Comic-Con culture, uh, con culture overall. So Ace Universe is a new company that's promising top shelf talent, which is typically not available in the con at the cons. Most cons are typically either older celebrities from the 80s or 90s and uh, people from television. Stefan Amell does his own Heroes and Villain Con. Um, the A Walking Dead podcast does the Walker Stalker Con. Both cons are pretty well executed. Uh, they tend to be in smaller spaces, but you know you tend to get a good bang for your buck in terms of uh, getting to interact with celebrities, take photos, get autographs, etc. Um, Ace Universe promised to get top shelf talent and exper do experiences that aren't typically uh, a little more high end than you see at most conventions. Um, I'll say this, if you went there just to interact with the talent, you'd have a good time. Uh, all the actors were really professional, very gracious. Uh, you know, sometimes when you interact with uh, some some talent, they, they, they're just doing this because they know it's a, a good incentive to make money for themselves. And they don't really want to interact with the public as intensely as being in a convention can be. I'll say that everybody, I came across was pretty gracious. Um, I got to see Gal Gadot, Ray Fisher, and I got to interact with Charlie Cox. And um, he had he was very gracious, very personable. Asked everyone their name. Said they, that he was happy to meet them. You really got a genuine sense that he was uh, appreciating the experience. I will say this: uh, the way the convention was marketed was that it would be a bit of a kind of like doing a museum almost. That you would have these panels and. Uh, displays that would be a little more high-end, maybe some 3D models, some graphics, some videos to kind of be a bit more entertaining than some of the typical convention setup, which is more just uh, selling merch or interacting with celebrities or interacting with comic artists. Um, they had, I will say, uh, the level of talent they were able to acquire was pretty next level. Uh, they had Scott Snyder, who is writing Batman. They had Neil Adams, who's written Batman. Uh, they had some real high-level artists, people that have worked on Deadpool and Spider-Man. Um, personally, I'm not attached to any artist or writer in comic books except for uh, Grant Morris and uh, Michael Michael Brenda, Michael Brendis. Uh, so for me personally, I didn't. It wasn't a big deal for me to see them, but it was cool. It, honestly, the lines were very pretty short. Uh, you know, the staff was pretty quick with getting people because it was a convention center. You had basically the setup where the typical place where you would get your drinks or your hot dogs when you go to a sporting event, that, that area was where the artists were lined up and it was lined up in a circular pattern. So you could walk around. Um, when you went down into the basement, one of the areas where they probably would put loading trucks for games or events is where they were doing the photos. On the opposite side is where they had uh, vendors. The, the amount of vendors were pretty small. It was probably like maybe 10 to 20 people there. I will say this. I got a series of comic books at prices that I found pretty astonishing. Um, I got this graphic novel, which is usually $15 for about $3. Another high-end graphic novel that usually sells at Barnes & Noble for like $15, $16 dollars again for $3. And uh, another graphic novel that's typically for $20 at $3. Um, they had one vendor who was just selling graphic novels at prices that seemed like they probably were fall, they fell off a truck. So that to me was incredible. Um, the panels themselves were more uh, comic theory, some science-based panels. Um, I was listening to one specifically describing uh, cybernetics that they want to use that kind of have mirror stuff that you would see like in Cyborg and stuff. So while that was somewhat interesting, I didn't think, you know, the visual, com the visual was kind of lacking. You really felt like if they're talking about doing next level, they should have done some prep with either videos, uh, hire some artists to do some artwork in the background, set up some panels or displays in the background. You know, you had your artists who were selling artwork and some of that was really well done. But uh, personally, you know, it's just a typical convention setup. 
I know that some people were complaining about the VIP experience was not what they had marketed to people. Personally, um, I've soured on VIP, uh, paying extra for VIP experiences because I did Rock the Bells about 10 years ago where it was Wu-Tang and Rage Against the Machine. And I primarily did it for the Wu-Tang, but you know, I spent uh, at the time maybe $250, which is a lot of money for me at that point. And you know, it was supposed to be, you got a laminate, a book bag, uh, drink passes. You were supposed to have your own exclusive area to sit. And you know, they oversell. So obviously the exclusive area to sit, you can't see, you can barely see anyway. So I knew from that experience that purchasing anything through VIP was not, not really worth it. So I know that some people complain on social media about the VIP experience, about feeling like they were stiffed. I would personally say this, if you have, um, obviously if you have an attachment to a certain celebrity, to a certain actor, you know, even getting to say, say a few pleasantries, ask a few questions, it's really not worth spending that extra three to $400 for a VIP experience. Um, you know, Henry Cavill was very gracious. He did his, his little treasure hunt to get people a chance to, uh, to interact with him in a and A. I would say if there was a VIP experience that offered an exclusive Q and A, like Henry Cavill did for his, on his own reconnaissance, that would be worth it. But it's not something worth doing if you're just, uh, if you have the time to, to stay. Um, you know, the photo company that does uh, Arrow and The Walking Dead did uh, my photograph. So you can see. Um, you know, like I said, Charlie Cox was very personable. I thought the actors were very personable. It definitely had the top tire talent that, that they promised. Um, John couldn't go because unfortunately his house was destroyed in a fire in California. So hopefully, you know, his family is okay, which is the most important part, but obviously having to deal with insurance, having to figure out where to put everybody, you know, obviously he couldn't come to the con. Um, they replaced him with the woman who plays Electra, who I had wanted to get a selfie with or get her to autograph something, but she canceled her autograph session that I was waiting for to do more pictures. So, you know, and that's one of those things. That's the that's the thing of doing being at a con. Not you know, not everyone you want to meet is going to be there. Not everyone's going to be available when they say it's going to be available. Um, I recently went to a convention for Green Arrow, and they, Dia was supposed to be there, and she wasn't. And you know, it's just the the life of a con that things kind of move and adapt, and you have to kind of roll with the punches. Um, you know, I would say it's definitely the level of talent they're getting is, is next level. And it's definitely something worth doing if you're interested. I would say uh, if Ace sees this video, I don't know if they will, please work a little bit more on your presentations, on your panels. Um, you know, if you guys could spend a little bit of more, I understand attracting the talent must have cost a lot of money. Obviously, you know, the, the reason the price of doing a photograph or autograph with Gal Gadot or Henry Cavill was so high was, you know, they're movie stars, they're used to making a certain amount each day. So for them to travel even to some place like New York, it's a bit expensive. So obviously they had to, you know, spend most of their money attracting the talent. But, you know, just getting some artists to do some artwork, to establish maybe like a few stations, do, do some videos with some people, you know, a lot of people are willing to do things for the promotional value for say, to be associated with the convention. So I would say definitely invest a little bit more in your presentation. Obviously, you have the talent and the availability of the talent. That's going to obviously attract the, the people. But if you want to have those uh, return two, three day visits, you're going to have to work a little bit better on your overall presentation. Because I'll say this, um, Stefan Amell's uh, Hero and Villain Convention, it's a much smaller space, but you feel, because it's a much smaller space, you feel like it's very compact and you, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Because, you know, you have a couple of sellers, you have the Q&As, all the actors participate in Q&As. Um, and, you know, obviously the actors are there to make money and they're there to, to do the autograph and do the pictures. But there really should have been a, a Justice League panel on Saturday and a Justice League people panel on Sunday. Doing it just on Sunday, you know, people that paid for Friday or Saturday passes didn't get a chance to see them. And, it, you know, obviously you do something for 40 minutes have them just tell a few stories about the, about shooting the movies. Everybody's happy. You don't even have to do a Q and A section if you don't need to, if you don't want to. So I would say, you know, overall, it's a 
it was a B experience for me. I'm very happy I got to meet Charlie Cox. I love the Daredevil series. You know, if you've watched this channel before, I've reviewed the Daredevil comics. I think they're excellent. I got this shirt at the convention. I thought it was a great shirt. Um, so yeah, I would say it's, it's a good experience. I would definitely go back, but they need to work on their presentation a bit. Peace.